Ukraine is home to both the largest nuclear power plant in Europe and the site of the largest nuclear power plant disaster in history. There are 15 active nuclear reactors at four sites across Ukraine, and these plants generate about half of the country's energy. And now Ukraine is in a full-blown war. We're learning firsthand that civilian nuclear power and, and war, conventional war, do not go together. The largest power plant in Europe caught fire as a result of shelling by Russian troops. And now that plant and Chernobyl are both under Russian control. As Russian forces take control of nuclear power plants in Ukraine, concern is growing for the staff that keeps those facilities operating safely. They're just humans, and every technological system relies on a human operator. The duress and the psychological pressure that these people are operating under, you know, carrying out really, really very highly responsible, very very crucial tasks of keeping the operation of these power plants safe, all the while worrying how their families are doing back in town. Another concern is nuclear power plants in Ukraine losing power, and in turn, losing the ability to keep the core and the pools where spent radioactive fuel are stored cool and stable. People might think it's paradoxical, but nuclear power plants generally rely on electrical power from the grid uh, to power their safety systems under normal circumstances. What keeps me up at night is that this, now that this is a war zone, um, should electricity be cut off? You know, that could be a problem. Nuclear power plants generate electricity through nuclear fission, when unstable uranium atoms are broken up into smaller atoms, releasing heat. Nuclear fission takes place in the core of the reactor. Long rods of nuclear fuel containing uranium are submerged in water. That water will heat up because of the contact with the hot fuel, and it is used to generate steam, which then is used to power a turbine and produce electricity. The whole idea about the safe operation of a nuclear reactor is that you want to control the intensity of that reaction. You really don't want it to go amok, right? Because then really bad things could happen. To keep the nuclear fuel from getting too hot, Water is constantly pumped through the core of the reactor and through the pools where spent fuel is stored. But at Chernobyl, the spent fuel has been cooling for years and is not likely to be hot enough to pose an immediate threat if the plant loses power. But the active plants pose bigger risks. If electricity is cut off going to those plants, we'll have something that we saw in Fukushima when the tsunami cut off electricity. That's what caused the meltdown of those three reactors in Fukushima was the loss of electricity that pumps water and that keeps these plants going. In 2011, a tsunami cut off electricity to a nuclear power plant in Japan, causing three of its cores to melt down. The loss of power resulted in a number of explosions that released radioactivity into the atmosphere and Pacific Ocean forcing thousands of people to evacuate. If the core does melt, then it generates radioactive gases as well as hydrogen, which not to mention increased steam pressure from boiling water, all of which put pressure on the reactor vessel and the containment and could lead to radioactive releases into the environment. Nuclear reactors are usually enclosed in a steel or concrete structure meant to contain radioactivity in the event of a disaster. The cores are designed to withstand certain types of external events. For instance, hurricane force winds. Those aren't designed uh, necessarily to withstand a military uh, uh, great explosives. But the bigger threat is potentially to the support structures needed for the electrical and cooling systems, like the backup generators these plants rely on in case of a power outage. So should there be a power outage or the reactor should be disconnected from the main grid, there are diesel generators that are supposed to kick in. These 15 nuclear reactors, four nuclear power plants, finding themselves in the middle of a large-scale armed conflict of a full-blown war. None of the safety and security procedures have been designed with that kind of set of threats in mind. It's not clear how long backup generators can sustain a nuclear power plant with on-site fuel. But if it is something sustained, then eventually you run out of diesel. I mean, a myriad of things could possibly go wrong. Still, it's not likely that a nuclear event today would be to the same scale of the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. The Chernobyl nuclear plant was designed in a way unlike much of the nuclear power plants today. And the reactors did not have a containment structure. 
Chernobyl is more severe for that kind of release to occur in Ukraine. Today is less likely, but you could have something more like Fukushima, where you had more limited but significant local contamination out 23 miles away from the site. Pretty heavy contamination. Chernobyl's last reactor was shut down in 2000. But the site still contains highly radioactive material that crews monitor. The 19-mile radius around Chernobyl is saturated with radiation. And experts are concerned that increased activity or a fire could spur another radiological event. A fire would be, you know, not inconceivable. Fire could cause real damage for the soldiers who are there in the immediate area fighting, but also potentially harmful doses for people who are downwind. There was a spike in radiation levels at Chernobyl following Russian seizure. Reports are that this is dust brought from the tanks. You know, the, the tanks you know, like lift up a lot of dust and this radioactive materials that are stored in the ground become available for the monitors to pick up. But I'm not sure. That seems like 30 times higher seems like an awful lot of dust. We talk about radioactive nuclear cleanup, but that's a euphemism. All you can do is try to put the radioactivity someplace where it doesn't circulate so it can decay. The unstable forms of the chemicals that release radiation, known as radioactive isotopes, become more stable and release less radiation over time. But it can take a staggering amount of time for nuclear waste to decay. When you're thinking about mitigating the consequences of a nuclear accident and dealing with kind of the slew of radioactive isotopes and things contaminated with them, whether it's water or soil, you're talking at a time scale oftentimes that defies our human kind of lifetimes, right? The time that they remain still active and hazardous, depending on the isotopes, could be up to tens of thousands of years. 